Hi, this is Trey Fastwing. I'm going to do another Mr. Nightmare reaction. I uh, love Mr. Nightmare. I haven't done one of these in a while. So this is going to be the second video that I'm doing. And this is, I believe, Motel Horror Stories. Okay, there was a movie. Uh, I forgot what it was called. Mot uh, with, uh, Jesus Christ, with, I think, Luke Wilson. And what's her name? The English actress. I can't remember who was in uh, the vampire uh, horror movies. I can't remember her name now. But anyway, they were a couple that went to this hotel and they were... You know they, you know they were making basically snuff films, <laughs> and you know at this creepy hotel, okay, which is a good movie. I forgot the name of the horror movie. It was a good movie. I think they made a part two to it, which I haven't seen, but the original I think was really good. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think. I'm getting ready to uh, watch this motel horror stories, and I'll be right back with my reaction. Okay, let me put my headphones in. Excuse me, I dropped uh, something. Oh, I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, here we go, right now, go. Motel Horror Stories. Story one. During a road trip, I was passing through Ohio. Ohio. It was around that time I was starting to get sleepy behind the wheel. So okay. I stopped in this small town called Xenia. I looked for a hotel or motel and found this okay. place called Xenia Country Inn. It looked a little rundown, but so did this whole town, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Plus, all I needed was a night's sleep. Nothing okay. fancy. So I parked in the lot and went to the little front office, which was in the front corner of one of the two buildings to the motel. Okay. There was an old man sitting there, reading the paper. Yeah. It was hot in there, and there was a loud buzzing sound from his tabletop fan. <laughs> I asked for a room, and the man finally looked up from his paper without greeting me, and said <laughs> 65. Uh. I assumed he meant $65 for the room so I handed him my credit card. I asked if it's possible to get a corner room, and he simply said no. Ah. The customer service here was clearly not something included in the price. <laughs> the man handed me this old-fashioned key on an otherwise blank key ring. Yeah. They still didn't use key cards at this place. Mm. I walked across the parking lot to my room. Okay. The door was actually hard to unlock. I had to shimmy the key a little just to get it to finally turn. Okay. Before walking in, I looked around the lot, there were only two other cars in the parking lot. It was a ghost town. I stepped into the room, and it smelled like a mix of cotton and vomit. Ugh. I wondered if I should go back and ask for a different room, but I realized by the look of this place, all the rooms probably smelt. Yep. The room was small, and had a blue, dirty, worn-out looking carpet, a couch, a small coffee table, and a bed. <laughs> I shut the door and tried to lock it, but I was having trouble. More trouble than I did unlocking it. Oh, God. After about 30 seconds of shimmying and almost popping a blood vessel trying to <laughs> unlock it, I felt I may have broken it. But yeah. when I tried opening the door, it wouldn't open. So uh -oh. even though the door wasn't fully locked, as long as the door wouldn't open, that's all that mattered, I figured. Oh, God. I crawled up in the bed, and I heard all the old springs squeaking as my weight pushed into the mattress and the bed frame. Okay. I tried putting on the TV, but of course, the remote didn't work. Ah. So I just crawled under the covers and tried to go to sleep. Then it happened. Uh -oh. I nearly jumped out of my own skin when there was one loud thump at the window. Oh, I looked man. at the guy standing outside of it and he started talking, sounding what? all hurt and in need of help. What? He was saying, hey, please let me in. I hurt myself bad. I need help. And he definitely ah. saw me in that bed. Ah. I yelled back to go to the front desk. Exactly. He wouldn't stop though. There was no way I was opening that door. I had a exactly. feeling he was acting and this was a trap. Exactly. Eventually, after ignoring him for long enough, he left. Okay, good. I turned to check and confirm, and he was gone. Okay. I hadn't realized how truly unsafe this area was. <laughs> I had to get up and check the lock on the door just to be safe and make sure the door wouldn't open. Yeah. I gave the door a couple good pulls, and it didn't open. Okay. I then closed the curtains in front of the two windows so that he couldn't come back and look in at me again. Okay. That shook me up a bit, but the nerves calmed within half an hour, and okay. I was able to fall into a half-sleep not too long after. Okay. I started having this weird dream where I was in a closed supermarket running from the manager who was chasing me, <laughs> and at some point during the dream, these clicking sounds started taking over to the point that my whole dream shifted to incorporate these sounds, and then with that, I was awake. Oh. The room was cold for some reason. Uh oh. Then I looked down and realized the blanket was pulled off of me. Ah. Oh. I sat up to pull it back over me, but then I saw at the foot of the bed, there was this tall figure looming over me. Ah. Oh. Before I could scream, he went shh and told me not to move. <laughs> oh. He told me he wouldn't hurt me if I didn't make any movements or sounds. What? And he asked me where my wallet was. Ah, oh, fuck. I told him in my jeans pocket on the floor. 
All I saw was this figure towering over me in the bed, moving away from the foot of the bed to my jeans on the floor. I heard him rustling with the jeans, digging through the pocket until he found it. Uh. Then he asked what else I had in there. Uh. I was just taking a road trip. With that, he didn't say another word and left. Jeez. I ran to try and relock the door as soon as he left, having the uh. same trouble as earlier. I then called the police, but they were of no immediate assistance. Of course. We went to the guy at the front desk, who played back the video footage caught. However, the guy who entered the room was wearing a face mask and a hat, hiding all uh. of his features. <laughs> I got my money back and left. Thank yeah. God I didn't have much cash in my wallet. <laughs> I canceled all my cards and slept in my car. Jeez. I learned my lesson. Never to stop at a sketchy motel. Exactly. Jesus. Story two. Little Mads. By Little Mads. Early last year, my father and I traveled down to do some charity work in a small town that was flooded from recent rainfall. Okay. We had gathered a truckload full of donated clothes and items to help families get back on their feet. The first night, we stayed in a hotel that had a perfect view of the ocean. Okay. That night, my dad and I stayed up watching the Blair Witch Project on my laptop <laughs> using the hotel's free Wi-Fi. Okay. Let's just say I didn't get much sleep. Yeah. The next night, my mom had booked us a room at a motel seeing as we didn't expect to stay a second night. Okay. It was 100 meters away from a trailer park, and the property overlooked a large lake. The area was tucked away from the public and was surrounded by trees. My mom claimed that everywhere else was fully booked, so we had no other options. Okay. We met the two managers who ran and lived at the motel. There was an old lady who was sweet and informed us about everything we needed to know, including the fact that the lake hadn't been full for 20 years. Her husband, however, looked like he was taken straight from a serial killer movie, <laughs> him being the serial killer. He never spoke a word to us, he never smiled. Yeah. His wrinkles melted on his face and he had dark rings around his eyes. Jeez. That's when my dad and I started to have an uneasy feeling about that place. Mm. The rest of the day went by in a blur, so okay. my dad and I went out for pizza and a movie afterward to avoid going back to that place as much as possible. Good hiding. Once we arrived back at the motel, it was around 8pm and it was completely dark. As we went to the back of the truck to get our luggage, we yeah. found a bag of children's clothes hidden underneath a spare tire. We began to walk the bag over to the trailer park, thinking that a family may get good use out of it. When I felt the sudden urge to go back to the motel, seeing as we watched a scary movie last night coincidentally about teenagers encountering a witch in the woods, ah. we went to the front desk with the bag and asked the creepy old manager if we could <laughs> leave it with him to donate to the trailer park, seeing as they were neighbors and we had to leave early in the morning to go back home. Okay. His eyes widened and he shook his head while saying, No, there's no way in hell, I refuse to go there. Ah. And he walked off. Dad and I just looked at each other, saying with our eyes, What the hell just happened? <laughs> we then decided to drop it off in the charity bin back home. Okay. We went to sleep once we had all our showers, which was about an hour or so later. Okay. I specifically remember waking up at 2.17 a.m. because of Dad's snoring. <laughs> I stayed up reading a book on my phone, my body faced towards the door. I also remember hearing cars speeding up and down the driveway that night. I let the thought slide, thinking it was just some guys goofing off. Okay. That assumption later vanished after I noticed a bright blue light appear through the cracks on the top and bottom part of the door and silent whispers coming from the other side that I was unable to decipher. Oh. I was too scared to even move. <laughs> I was frozen in the spot. Yeah. My heart was beating in my throat and my hands were shaking, and I mean literally shaking. Mm -hmm. I heard the door handle begin to rattle, and that's oh. when I knew that this wasn't going to end well. Oh. The light then disappeared, followed by complete and utter silence. Jesus. I was still frozen in that spot for another three minutes, which felt like hours, mm -hmm. before I woke up to my dad and told him everything that had happened. Mm -hmm. He then left and explained to me that earlier in the night, he couldn't sleep due to hearing scratches in the walls right beside our bed. Ah. I was confused and didn't believe him until he put his finger to his lips while saying, Shh, do you hear that? Everything went silent until I heard brief scratches coming from our bed frame. Oh. I shot out of the bed and told dad that we needed to leave. So we nah. left the room key on the bed while sneaking off to the truck. <laughs> we ended up leaving at 2.32 a.m. <laughs> Never will I ever go near that motel ever again. Yeah, I'm buying. Story 3, Nate Paul. Long story short, my ex-girlfriend and I had a pretty explosive relationship and we didn't get along very often. Okay. We were on this weekend trip in the mountains just to go sightseeing and hiking because we thought it would be good for us. 
Okay. But shit hit the fan in the hotel room on the second night, and basically I couldn't sleep in the same room as her. Jeez. Instead of getting another hotel room for myself for like 150, I drove literally down the road to a motel and stopped there to stay for a fraction of the price. <laughs> My logic was, if I left for the night and gave her time to cool off, maybe things would be better by morning. Okay, good idea. I got a room for, I'm not lying, $50 for the night. When I was walking towards my room, the room next door was wide open. Yeah. As I passed, I looked inside, and it was lit up by the blue glow of the TV screen. Oh. Though from the angle I was at, I could not see what was on the screen. Yeah. I didn't see anyone inside, but then again, I didn't stop to look like a weirdo. <laughs> I proceeded to my room. It was a modest, normal-looking motel room for the price. Just a queen-size bed with a typical tacky floral bed cover, a TV, and a sofa. Yeah. I wasn't really tired, so I just laid with the TV on and played games on my phone for a while. Okay. There was some weird noise from what I thought was coming from the TV, so I turned it off. But the noise persisted. Oh. It wasn't the TV. So I got up and listened, and realized it was coming from the room next door. Oh. I couldn't tell if it was a fighting couple, if it was the TV from next door, or if it was the sound of someone dying. It was just incredibly muffled. At this point, I had nothing else to do but to try and go to sleep. Okay. But then there was a banging on the wall. The wall separating the two rooms. Uh oh. I got up and went closer to the wall, and it happened again. It was without a doubt someone on the other side pounding on it with their fist. Yeah. Why were they doing this? I can't say I wasn't a little freaked out, but I had to just be a man and confront them. Uh oh. I went over next door. Surprisingly, the door to the room was still open, and the TV was still on, but there was oh. no sound. Oh. I knocked on the open door, asking if there was a problem or if someone needed help. There was no <laughs> response. I could even see that the bathroom door was open and the light was off. I stepped into the room slowly, cautiously. When I cleared the wall, blocking the view of the sofa and the bed, and still saw nobody, I just stood there all confused-like. I went closer to the TV to look at what exactly was on the screen. Yeah. It was just a blank blue screen. But there was a sticky note on the screen. It had writing on it. Oh. I picked it off the screen. It said, check under the bed. Oh. I dropped the note and ran out of the room, oh. slamming the door. Oh. I ran back to my room and made sure to double lock the door with the chain lock. Oh. I crawled into bed and texted my girlfriend telling her what just happened and that Jeez. I was freaking out. She called me immediately and I started telling her over the phone. As I was mid-explaining it, there were more bangs on the motel room wall. Oh. She heard it clearly because I put it on speaker. Jeez. I started freaking out, and she told me to run to my car or to the front desk. Yeah. I chose to run to the front desk so I could get my money back. <laughs> I told the guy at the front desk that he should go to the room next to mine and kick the person out. But he exactly. looked at me and left and said that there was no one staying on either side of that room. Oh, he boy. seemed to know immediately that they were both vacant. Oh, I told God. him he needs to check it out and that I needed my money back. <laughs> so he went with me with the key to the room in his hand and unlocked the door. But now the TV was off and the room was dark. Of course. He walked inside and checked under the bed as the note had said. <laughs> Even the posted note that I dropped on the floor was gone. Ah. He refused to refund me. It was $50. <laughs> I didn't care. I left and went back to the hotel to my girlfriend and yeah. was glad to hug her and sleep in the same bed as her. Exactly. I don't know what I witnessed in that motel room. I don't know who or what was under that bed. And I don't <laughs> want to know. Oh, God. That's why you stop investigating stuff. Hmm. Let me go investigate this. No. Wrong idea. Hmm. Scotty's motel. They can see it. Wrong idea. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Those are some good stories. That last story. First of all, <laughs> uh, you went to a cheap motel because you, you I can understand you had an argument with your girl and stuff, but come on, man. Sleep on the floor or something. I, I'm not going all the way down to another hotel, okay? And you just took a cheap hotel, 50 bucks. See, see what you get for 50 bucks? You get, you get terrorized <laughs> for being cheap, okay? That's crazy, okay? And... Check under the bed. Oh my god, I would have had a heart attack. First of all, the only way people do that stupid stuff. When they go, hmm, let me go investigate. There's a noise on the door. Yeah, let me go let me go over there and investigate. See what that is. Is that with no weapon or nothing? Let me just go investigate that, because I'm curious type. I'm, I'm not, let me go see, see what that I'm curious. What is that noise? No, that can't possibly ain't no somebody over there that wants to hurt me or somebody's trying to lure me out, or somebody's trying to freak me out. 
Can't be that. Let me just go investigate on my own instead of calling the cops, maybe. Okay? No. Of course, it was somebody screwing around with you. And when you went in that room and, and said, no, said, check underneath the door, uh, under the bed, I would have had a heart attack right there. Because then you, that would have freaked you out. I said, oh my God, there's somebody's under the bed. Let me back out of this room real quick or real fast <laughs> or real slow. Or somebody's got to lift, jump up <laughs> out of underneath that bed, a big guy, and, and, and kill me. <laughs> So that again, that was stupid. Okay, this is this, this is crazy. <laughs> uh, again, and don't investigate. Don't be don't be curious. It's not Scooby Doo. Real life is not Scooby Doo. Okay, where you're gonna meet some guy in a mask that will chase you and you can run away from him. No, real life people can kill you. Okay, okay, or stab you or rob you. Okay, so don't go don't go investigating. If somebody's banging on the door, banging on the stuff like that. Just call, call the cops or call the manager and he'll say, "Look, somebody's banging on the on the from the room next door." Okay, and then the manager would have told you, oh, listen, there's nobody there, all right? Obviously, there's somebody there, okay? So call the cops and let the cops come and go in that room and check that out, okay? And check underneath the bed. The cops would have found the note, right? And look underneath the bed, because somebody's probably playing, you know, either they're trying to rob you or just, or they saw you, you know, check into that and they want to, to mess with you. Okay, that's what that probably was. Now, the second story with the guy and his father, come on, that freaky noise is, again, <laughs> Wake up your father. The only good thing about that is that you got your father with you, so at least you got a fighting chance. At least if it's just one guy, yeah, you know, was messing with you, okay, or even if two's guy, you know, at least you got a fighting chance. Now, if it's more than two, yeah, then you kind of at a disadvantage. But uh, never, if something freaking you out, you don't got a good instinct about something, leave, okay. That's what I say. Don't stick around, okay. Just, just go, okay. And that first story, oh my God, that that would have. I probably would have had a heart attack. The guy said, Where, where's your wallet? <laughs> Tall guy standing at the foot of your bed. Where's your wallet? Oh, come on. That would, oh, my God. That would have... That would have freaked... Oh, that would have freaked me out. Oh, my God. And then the, the door you had trouble opening... Come on. That's just too much things going on. The first... The lousy, cheap room. You can't get into it. You can barely get into it. Okay. You plopped, almost popped the butt vessel trying to get through the door. And then when you're in the door, somebody's, you know, calling from outside the... Want to tell you to help because obviously they want to lure you outside, and then somebody's at the actually somebody breaks into the room, and actually is in the room, <laughs> and you know, wants to rob you. Come on, man, that's that's crazy. That's what the sketchy places like that. Don't go to those sketchy places unless you got a weapon or something, because come on, what what else? Yeah, you can't defend yourself. That's 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 insane. Okay, that's just those those are freaky stories. But I've got the name of that. With Luke Wilson and uh, Jesus, I can't remember her name. The guy, the chick from the Underworld movies, I can't remember her name. Uh, Kate Beckinsale, that's her name. I couldn't remember her name at first. Kate Beckinsale, that's a really good movie. Uh, that's one of those sketchy movies where her and Luke Wilson were, you know, they went to this hotel, you know, and it was, they were make, actually making snuff films and stuff. And uh, Frank Whaley, he was uh, the hotel man, the sleazy hotel manager. Okay, but uh, anyway, those stories, I think the the Rob story. <laughs> Yeah, I would have to put the Rob story because there was actually somebody physically in your room, <laughs> okay, and basically tell you, where's your wallet? <laughs> okay, I said right over here. But, but see, if you had, had a gun, you could have shot him right in the head, okay? Okay, or if you had a bat by your bed, you could have jumped up and and cracked the cracked skull in, okay? That's why I always sleep with a bat by my bed, okay? I always, my bat is always right there, right at the foot of my bed. So if somebody... And I have a lock on my door, but in case somebody ever breaks in, okay, I, and I hear it, I, I got that bat, and believe me, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Dave Kingman, and okay, and I'm gonna hit a home run, okay, literally, okay, they're gonna, they're gonna know me because I want to swing, swing for the fences, but anyway, uh, so I think the Rob story is the best one because that the guy was actually physically in the room, and then, and then, and then that plus that, that thing, you know, the guy, you know, trying to lure you out. And then the but the the third and the second story to me because you had your father your dollar your father with you even though you could hear the noises and all that stuff you, at least you had your father but you had something you know you, so you got protection that way but the third story with the you know you hear that pounding on the door and then you go come on check under the bed <laughs> oh man posting up saying check under the bed oh my god my I'd have, I'd have probably had a heart attack first of all I would have never went across I would have never went in that room to begin with okay. <laughs> Okay, I would have called the cops when I heard that pounding on the door. On the, I would have called the uh, called the hotel, you know, front desk, and tell them somebody's pounding on the damn door, or or then call the cops. Okay, I'm not going over there to investigate. Okay, I'm not. 
detective. Okay, I'm not the police. Okay, I'm not going to investigate. Okay, unless I had a gun or something. I'm not going to investigate anything. Okay, I'm staying in my I'm staying in my uh, room, okay? So, again, that's another lesson. Don't be cheap and or don't have arguments with the government. Especially, come on. I can, you can have a volatile relationship. You know what? You pay for that room, okay? Go over there. Go over there. You, sleep, you want to have an argument? Sleep on the couch or sleep on the chair. I'm not... I'm not leaving and going down the road to another hotel that's cheap, okay? Screw that. You pay for that hotel room, I'm staying in there, okay? That's just me. But anyway, let me know which story you think was the scariest. Again, I think the, the first one was scariest because it actually he got physically robbed and somebody was actually broke into the hotel room, okay? And could have killed you. <laughs> and lucky he was just there for the, grab the wallet and leave, but he could have actually killed you because he was physically in the room. Okay, and the third story is just freaky because... You know, the, the post-it note saying, check under the bed. Oh, my God. I would have had a heart attack. Check under the bed. Oh, my heart. No, I'd have, I'd have had a heart attack on the way out of the <laughs> I'd have been one of those, um, uh, you know, cartoon things where you run and you and you see a silhouette. <laughs> Ran through the wall and you, all you see is my silhouette. Me running in terror like that. <laughs> you see a big terror like that. Of me like that, and I ran right through the wall <laughs> and got and busted out like that, like her, you know, like her and Monster is what she do, or like cartoons, how they do like that's what I did to me. Anyway, let me know what you think of these motel horror stories, and then let me know if you've seen that that a horror movie with um with uh with a Frank Whaley and uh, Luke Wilson and Kate Beckinsale, which is a really good low budget horror movie, and I think they made a sequel to it, which I don't think I've seen the sequel. I think I think they made another sequel, but that's a good little uh, independent horror movie that that's really good. I forgot the name of it. I know it was like Motel something, uh, but it's it was a really good movie. Anyway, good real horror movie, suspenseful and everything else. But anyway, um, let me know what you think of this story from Mr. Nightmare. And again, let me know which story you think is the scariest. And again, I have links to Mr. Nightmare's channel in the description box so you can check out his channel. I also have links to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. Also, I have a link to my other channel, Bob Views and Opinions. You check that out as well. Also, I have a link down below to my uh, patron. And again, I want to say a special thank you to my patron. His name will appear in this video somewhere. I want to say thank you to him for supporting me and always having my back. And again, uh, my patron has owns only $5 a month, has tons of unedited TV show reactions on there. Got WandaVision, Loki, What If. I have uh, Hawkeye on there. I have uh, The Flash Season 8. I have Titan Season 3, Doom Patrol Season 3, uh, The Boys Season 2, The Mandalorian Season 2, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, uh, Superman and Lois. Stargirl Season 1, Stargirl Season 2, all four parts of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Tons of unedited content on there. Again, only $5 a month to check out the content. And again, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel. And again, follow the link below to Mr. Nightmare and check out his channel. I love his uh, videos. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.